All right. The second half of this game provided the highlights. It provided the goals. It uh, provided some different looks because I'll say at the scoreless half, if you're Wales, you got to be feeling great about how you just held the number one ranked team, the reigning World Cup champions to a scoreless draw at the half. And if the United States, maybe you're like, hey, what are we talking about in the locker room? Something that we got introduced to officially after the recent announcement of the co-captaincy of this team. It's Lindsey Horan, Alex Morgan, Horan wearing the armband in this match as both of those players got the start. Uh, Look, I was eager to see what was going to come out from this locker room Mm -hmm. in the second half, not just the possibility of substitutions, which we didn't see right away. We did see Trinity Rodman come in for Alex Morgan, but mostly that next window, that hour ish mark is where we started to see more influx of player rotation in this match. And I respect it. I, I look, they wanted to give that initial 11 or 10 more or less players to, to try to give them the opportunity to finally unlock some things didn't happen around, you know, maybe the the 55 minute mark. I think I got a little nervous as if we're starting to see some frustrations boil over a, a little bit. We saw, you know, Lindsay Horan giving an earful to to the official saying, "Hey, we're taking some pretty physical bumps here along the way." Uh, we saw her have some words with a Wales player over a free kick, and I was like, "Oh no, let's not get into that headspace." But you know what? the captain turns out was correct. Maybe there needed to be a little bit of uh, reaction perhaps to sort of get things going. Cause shortly after that, we do see some more subs come in. We see Sophia Huerta get into this game. We see Lynn Williams get into this game. We get to see finally the senior national team debut of Savannah DeMello. And I was so excited for that. My initial reaction was in the halftime was I would like to see Williams and DeMello get into this game. They're obviously having some troubles unlocking some things against Wales here. It's apparent that Rose Lavelle is not going to get minutes in this game. Who do you bring in off the bench to try to bring that dog into the game to sort of say, all right, let's go and shake things up. And I think DeMello is a very good kind of prototypical player in that sense. They were also struggling on those set pieces, Lisa. And we know that in NWSL, DeMello is an absolute shark. I know. That piece. And we saw her get a chance on a corner. We finally see some good delivery from the corner flag. Yeah. That was Mello. the best chance they had from DeMello on the corner. Sullivan making a good run. Yeah, almost thought it was going to be there. They had to have a goal line clearance by the Wales defender. I mean, massive clearance. Like, that was fantastic um, on the defensive play by the Welsh side. But finally, you're exactly right. DeMello is whipping balls in with enough pace um, at the right level and and picking out targets. It finds the head of Andy Sullivan, and then it is a goal line clearance. But the substitutes, I mean, that did come in. I mean, it's very typical to see maybe one at halftime and then around the 60-minute mark, and that's Rodman at half. Um, and then Huerta, Williams, and DeMello coming in. I, I wanted to see DeMello, right? You you don't want to get your first cap when you're already in the World Cup. Like, this was good. Shake it out. I think there was definitely some moments where you could tell she was thinking a little bit. When, when you get into a camp and you're getting new instructions from a new team, um, you have a lot of roles that you have to play and a lot of directions that you have to follow and understanding not only your role, your spacing on the field, how the team is looking to play, but the 10 other players around you, frankly, like you need to know their role that way when they do something, whether it's in line with what they're supposed to be doing or not, you can adjust and adapt and, and fill those holes. So wheels were turning for DeMello and she stepped on the pitch. And I think very quickly she was able to shake that off and say, you know what, I'm just playing this game. I'm playing the game of soccer and I'm going to do good things with it. But Trinity Rodman, for me, obviously the super yeah. sub in how things happened. But it started, I think, well before the goals actually started coming in the final 15 minutes. Because to start the second half, she was a bit all over the place. Um, getting in, trying to get involved, trying to have a, a different role than Alex Morgan played, which was incredibly quiet. Incredibly quiet. And so with that, we saw movement from the front three, Sophia and Thompson, Sophia Smith, Alyssa Thompson, and Trinity Rodman be a bit more different once Rodman was in there. And then as soon as Lynn Williams stepped onto the pitch for 
for Alyssa Thompson, it was incredibly different. I, I wonder how much conversation was given to Lynn Williams before she stepped on the pitch around the 64th minute about the spacing on the field and where it could be because we saw Williams dropping back so deep in the midfield to pick up the ball, um, get onto it. And and that's what ultimately spurred the goals that came for the United States as it, as it continued to run throughout this game. Lynn Williams, she got this hockey assist in the first goal, but that's why her role was so deep in the midfield. She was able to pick it up and she was dishing these 25, 35 yard passes on a dime to her teammates. And she did it a number of times, wish, whipping it out wide, whether she was finding DeMello or Smith or Rodman. And ultimately the the goal that comes from it um, with just under 15 minutes to go in the game, the 76th minute is uh, from Lynn Williams to Sophia Smith to Trinity Rodman into the goal. I um I love to see it. I, 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 I'm not trying to minimize it by, by any way, shape, or form. I've just had some time to come down from it. I was absolutely hyped when I saw this goal come to life. You love, love, love to see it. it yes, it took <laughs> over 75 minutes to get to this point, but I'm with you in pointing out all of the buildup to that moment. I think if you're looking at it from minute one to minute 76. Yeah, that's a long time. But how this goal comes to life is part of two players who came off of the bench at halftime alongside yeah. Sophia Smith. And I I love the unselfishness of Sophia Smith in, in this moment to get this opening goal. Because we talked about that and referenced that a lot in the play of Trinity Rodman that she is also at times a very selfless yeah. player and will look for the pass or look for the open player instead of being the one to go ahead and put it away. So to sort of have the very intelligent presence of mind and quick decision-making to see Williams, to make that alternate run alongside Smith, to be that open and extra. To outlet. stay on side. Like Loved I it. It sounds so simple, but there was so much space for Rodman to just overrun on this play, and she didn't. She stayed well behind Smith, so it wasn't going to be offside. There was no opportunity for that. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really an overall it, group effort from the front line, and that's that's what you want. That's what you want in a send-off yeah. game. The fact that all three are contributing in goal-scoring opportunities, the unselfishness, the runs in the box, um, it, it was fantastic. And for Trinity, when they said this, it was only her third goal of her career, the first of the year for Trinity Rodman. I, I heard the can crack open. <laughs> I heard it. As soon as that goal went in, it was like, he's ready. The can's been open. <laughs> She's Rodman's ready to unleash. If you had any doubts before this game, before the 76th minute when it happened, I hope everyone took a sigh of relief because once the jar opens for Rodman and she gets that first goal, they're going to continue to come. And, hey, we saw that just about 12 minutes later in this game. I love how it comes after – Kind of a frustrating moment, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's the other part of this that I really love because something that we've heard, you know, or seen with Rodman as, as we've, you know, watched NWSL and watched her play with the United States Women's National Team. You even hear opposition and defenders, you know, that that Rodman is is a young player, a player that maybe you could get under her skin or, or frustrate a bit, you know, out on the. She's league. got a short temper and all, she'll all get a couple those, yellow cards. Yeah, yeah, all of that kind of jargon, right, that we've heard about Rodman, and it's like to to know that just minutes. Before this goal happens, there's some contact just outside of the box, right? The, her teammates, she herself looking at the official saying, hey, like what's yeah. going on here? Where's the card? Where's the None of that. She's not given that. But you know what? Focus. She doesn't stay in that. Focus. Focused. I, that's what. That's why I loved this opening goal. I don't care that it comes at the 75th minute. The fact that it is created and brought to life by by Williams and Smith and Rodman, and that it was such a cool, cool, calm and collected finish by Rodman. Chef's kiss. Absolutely. And it ultimately is the game winner. They don't need a brace from no, Rodman. No. They but do. she provides it anyway. <laughs> but she provides they, it anyway. They need a brace from her because at, at this point, Welsh, uh, that Wales is still in it, right? Their confidence is still in it. Mentally, they're still in it after that first, first goal because they just held the number one team in the world to – 
zero goals until the 76th minute, and they still have a chance and an opportunity. So the second goal uh, coming in the 88th minute is is one that just seals the deal. It puts the tape on the box for it. it second goal from Rodman. And as you said, it does come after a frustrating slew of, of moments. But my favorite part of watching these goals, and, and one of the things that's really crucial for me as an analyst, is to see how it develops, how they continue to go back, um, and what really sets the tone for the play. And sometimes it's a couple minutes before, right? Whoever makes the really hard tackle in the back, whoever gets into it. DeMello started this play because the United States had a wave of pressure onto the goal and Wales was clearing the ball out and their defenders had a little bit of time to send the ball up, which just would have reset things for the United States. They would have still collected. It wasn't a big transition moment for Wales. And out of nowhere, Savannah DeMello comes streaking into the screen and she makes a tough tackle. She doesn't get all the ball in this tackle, but it's enough to deflect it. And that deflection then bounces around. And that's where we see Trinity authoritatively jump on top of it after she had a look at on goal just a few moments before and it didn't work out. And she curls it. She 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 looks at the goal and understands where the spatial awareness is and fixes her mistake that she made just minutes before in striking it too hard, going for the power. Instead, she finds finesse behind the the ball outside the top of the 18 and curls it in. But it starts with DeMello's defensive work initially in the box to prevent an easy clearance from Wales. We get the the stamp on it. We get Rodman delivering it. It's the win. It's the full 2-0 win for this team before they have to head off to a World Cup. So where do they go from here? What comes next? Well, we know that they're literally about to get on a plane tonight and head off to New Zealand to begin their World Cup stage. And they're going to go up against Vietnam to kick things off. They're going to face off against Netherlands. They're going to face off against Portugal. They're going to play the entirety of their World Cup group stage in New Zealand. So we know that that is the immediate Mm -hmm. thing that comes next. But in terms of what comes out of this particular game, is there something else that you want to see from the coaching staff, the players, like going into this World Cup match I, day one? I mean, in terms of between now and then, I don't think I'm going to see too much. It, I mean, it comes down to media availability and interviews and those conversations. But internally within this team, I want them to continue to talk about their roles on this team and continue to understand what the team needs from them. I think there was, there's a moment where Vlako Anonofsky talked about Lynn Williams and saying that she is the best 15 minute player in the world and she will come on and it, even in as little as 15 minutes, as soon as she steps on the field, she will make a difference in the game. And perhaps that's her role moving forward, a 15-minute player. That's when we saw her come on in this game. She didn't sub on until the 65th minute. Um, I, I think she would like to be a little bit longer of a, an impact player, but I think it's more of the idea that there is a lot of transparency between the coaching staff and the players. And, of course, it's this mentality of uh, next player up, always and and you're always going to fill in and step for the team but as a player if you understand your role and understand what the team needs from you and you can kind of I don't want to say accept that but come come to terms with that and understand really what it means fully from all sides of it you can head into a world cup with that much more confidence and that way when you are called upon to do a different role you're ready for it. But you also know that, hey, if that opportunity never comes, this is what you're here to do. And I think we saw different roles throughout this game, right? If if Lynn Williams is that game changer that comes in off the bench and can spark a difference, and and maybe that's the way that the coaching staff sees her in a way that she can learn, right? Hey, Lynn, sit right next to me, and we're going to talk about this game for the first 45 minutes, and you're going to see where the spaces are, and then you go in, and that's where you capitalize on the game. Uh, Also, with Megan Rapino and what her role is, with Lindsay Horan as the captain, with Gurma and Cook in the back line, their roles on this team, that's what I want to see from this this group because there are so many new players, young players getting those caps. If they can at least – be in control of what the team wants from them, I think it's going to be a much more positive experience moving forward for this side. 